right? So uh, we're going through you know ProSight's data journey, and the theme is you know how we've actually used Tableau to transform some of the business processes that we have, and how we've actually gained more insight into our data, you know, utilizing Tableau. Um, a little bit about uh, ProSight specialty insurance. Uh, we are um, you know a niche specialty insurance provider in the PNC industry. Um, we provide uh, you know expert underwriting. Uh, Advice to all of our clients, uh, products and services, third-party solutions. We deliver excellent uh, customer service through our, uh, you know, claims handling teams, our customer support teams, and the billing touch. Wherever we have customer touch points, um, we provide insurance to all of our customers through limited, exclusive uh, distribution partnerships with our, um, you know, with our uh, various MGAs or partners, as well as through our own brokerage. Uh, as well as through our new you know, direct-to-consumer platform, ProSight Direct. A little bit about myself. Uh, obviously, my name is Manish Munshi. I have over 17 years of uh, experience in the financial industry across various uh, areas of technology and architecture. Uh, specifically, right now, I'm the, data, uh, the director of data management at ProSight Specialty Insurance, and we've been focused on developing our BI platform amongst a lot of the other initiatives that we have on the data front. The agenda at a high level is going to be something like I'm going to talk a little bit about the early days, uh, specifically, you know, when I joined the firm back in 2015, what the state was, what the landscape was, the technology landscape, the BI landscape, and then what were some of the challenges we faced and uh, how we kind of embarked upon picking the right tool for our BI platform. And then eventually how we went ahead and we implemented Tableau, how what we consider, you know, transforming business, some use cases that we actually worked on, which has made a significant impact to the organization. And then we'll look at some evolution in numbers in terms of the growth of Tableau uh, in the context of the growth of the number of resources that we've had to, uh, you know, we, we've had supporting Tableau. And then I'll talk a little, bit, a little bit about what has worked for us, just in case it helps some of you folks. I don't know where specifically in your journey you are with respect to you know, building out your BI platforms, but I'll just mention a few things around you know, what has worked for us and what's next for us. Just out of curiosity, before I start off, uh, how many of you actually have already have Tableau and uh, already have Tableau in house? Okay, all right, so all of you already have Tableau. Okay, wonderful. All right, and then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about at the end you know, what is next for us, what we see as next steps. So starting off early days, again, this goes back to probably like June, July 2015. Um, we had, um, obviously, our policy administration system, our loss system, and on an overnight basis, we were feeding data to our downstream systems, the reporting platforms, as well as our, our, our financial reporting was managed by a third-party vendor. So we used to overnight send them all the data. And then typically, you know, the expectation was by 8 a.m. every morning, they would give us back uh, our data in a form which was, you know, our financial reports and dashboards. It was, it was again, it was a solution that was based off of the front end was ASP, and in the back end, they were using a data cube. And again, there was a lot of, um, lot of issues with, you know, there being delays uh, in reporting. So typically, the SLA was ATM, but there were several instances where we shot past that, and we didn't have the data available till like, you know, 9, 10 sometimes in the morning. And that was a, you know, key frustration for management. The other issues were, um, uh, it was a very basic tool. There was, uh, it was because of the nature of the data and because it was probably using, um, you know, underneath it was using data cubes, there, there was a limited flexibility in terms of integration with new data sources. So as we were growing, we realized that we needed to, um, you know, get new views built. We needed to incorporate new systems. We were implementing a new billing system. We needed to incorporate data from the billing system, all of those kinds of things. And it was extremely difficult and time consuming to get any of it done. So we used to, uh, you know, we tried working with the vendors and it used to take like weeks, if not months, to actually get the requirements down and then they used to quote us a very high price and it, it was all kind of, it was not a very agile environment. Uh, again, the data was also split across multiple, you know, different data sources and some of the data sources we had access to, some of the data sources we did not really have access to, but, um, you know, and users were just creating their own, you know, reports in Excel and they were not really, there were no consistent data definitions, so people just came up with their own versions of, you know, the reports which they shared with the leadership team, and sometimes leadership team got like, you know, a few different reports, all of which did not align with one another, so it was always a challenge. So, considering all of that, we kind of embarked upon the journey on what would the right BI solution be, and what were the key capabilities that we were looking for. 
So we started looking at you know, the key capabilities, and the top two capabilities that we identified from our perspective were um, visualization, which is obviously Tableau's strong suite. Uh, Tableau is very good at the visualization aspect of things. It's, it was a very well-known fact. But also uh, virtualization. Um, I'm not sure if everyone over here is familiar with what virtualization is, but it's essentially trying to, um, you know, leaving the data in place across the multiple disparate data sources and just bringing it all together within the Tableau layer so that we don't have to deal with all of the expensive data movement from the source systems into the target data warehouses. Just keeping the data in place, being able to report on it, and, and enabling it. And actually have a follow-up slide to this, because to us, virtualization has been a really key component, and we've actually utilized it very extensively. So I have another slide on that, just to explain a little bit what I mean by virtualization. Uh, the other things that we were looking at, obviously, was you know security, data discovery. We wanted to do data mining on the data. We wanted to get insights. There were some reports where we just, it was like extract kind of reports, where obviously our recommendation was that Tableau is not the right tool for doing extracts. But uh, at the same time, we, we had a legacy uh, system as well, which we use for extracts. But th the goal was that Tableau should have anything that can actually be visually seen better, and you know we can actually get insights out of it. And then creation of dashboards and, and basic governance capabilities. And, and now we're focusing more on governance as we go forward as well. So again, virtualization, data remains in place, no costly data movement, real-time access to source systems. So this is an example of a virtualization, what, what I mean by virtualization. This, this is actually the Tableau, uh, you know, the data source view, where you can see that there are three different um, data databases. I don't know if I could make this work. But there are three, essentially, these three things over here, the policy claims, data mart, differentiator model, and the earned premium. These are essentially three different SQL server databases which um, have a common attribute, which is the policy number in this case. So what we've done is that this data model basically gets a whole bunch of uh, the policy-related information from our warehouse as well as from our you know, source systems. It is enriched with data you know, attributes like um, you know, the policy effective date, the program that it belongs to, the niche. And then finally, we have data coming from um, a, a different database, which is the you know, our differentiator model. So we pride ourselves on differentiating you know, based on certain attributes that we, customers, that we offer to the customer, certain special programs and stuff. So that differentiator model is hosted in a separate database, and that's what we're bringing in over here as well. And then we get earned premium for a, from a completely third different data source. So again, the key is that we are able to bring all of this together based on the policy level. And obviously, we need to be careful when we bring this in because we need to ensure that the data is all at the same grain, otherwise it leads to issues. But uh, Tableau enables us the ability to actually bring everything together. This, this is the cross database joint functionality which we use quite extensively, and that's what I mean by virtualization. So again, it allows us to blend data from multiple data sources, it minimizes the need for data movement across the servers, and um, you know, it enables us to focus on actually creating robust data sources and making these available to the end users so that they can create their own reports. And, and they can go ahead and uh, you know, focus more on getting insights from the data as opposed to you know, focusing their attention on um, understanding what the data is or trying, and, trying to go to different places and trying to get the data from different sources. So you know, fast forward to present day, the way we've implemented it right now is we have our policy administration systems, we have our loss systems, we have our billing. We've also integrated other things like billing and submission, and there are other data sources. We have third-party data sources. And sitting on top of all of this, you know, it could be one system, it could be multiple databases, is Tableau. So because of the virtualization capability, we can bring data from any one of these systems we choose to, as long as we ensure that we bring it in with the right identifiers at the right level of grain, we can actually get all this information into Tableau and make it available to the end users. So Tableau, in a sense, provides us the virtualization and visualization layer and enables centralized data delivery to the end users. Now, the, the, the role of IT has been shifting more and more towards being a data provider uh, and, and less of a data consumer. So we don't actually try not to spend, we do build out a lot of reports and dashboards for our end users, but we're trying and enabling at some point you know, self-service reporting. We've already done that to a certain extent, and the goal is to enable more of that so that we can focus on you know, delivering the data in the right format and having it um, you know, certified data sources available to them with probably the right data definitions and all of the factors that go with it. Um, 
there's a lot of uh, there's a tremendous reduction in the amount of data that we now deliver via extracts because whenever someone comes to us and requests a data extract the immediate question is that what are you really trying to do with the data because what we've typically seen is you provide an extract unless it's for a compliance reason where they have to do a filing with some agency if they're asking for data they're typically going to take it put it in excel create a pivot table or create some charts out of it so it's like just tell us what you need and we can just build it out for you so that's that's the approach we have right now and any new dashboards or any new management reports that we we create are delivered via Tableau. So, um, so the theme again, the theme of this whole thing is, you know, how we've actually transformed business. So let, let's talk a little bit about that. So because of Tableau, we've now been able to access some of the data sources that were previously not accessible to us. Not because it, they, they weren't like, not because we didn't have rights to the database or anything of that sort, but it was difficult to extract the information and make it available to the end users. Uh, it was it was probably like you know it could be it, it was like resource constraints. We didn't have like ETL developers who had the bandwidth to actually do that. With Tableau, it just becomes sim as simple as you know dragging, dropping, maybe creating some custom SQL, and and making that data available to the end users in the form of a data source that they can then you know do do their stuff. So there's a tremendous uh, improvement in the accessibility and availability of data across the entire organization, and and especially like uh, you know. Uh, depending on the industry we work in. I mean, we have the finance team who's always kind of hungry for data. There's the actuarials who are extremely hungry for data all the time. So it, it, it's really helped them all out quite significantly. And again, it's a central one-stop shop for all of their reporting needs. Uh, any data source they want, they can go into you know, Tableau, just do a search on the data sources, and they, they can figure out what, what they can use. So we, we've actually developed a lot of these reports, and these reports have provided us tremendous insights into the data. And, and as I walk through some of the, I have like three implementation examples of how we've actually utilized Tableau. And that'll kind of highlight what I'm trying to say over here, that you know we've created more visibility into the data. We've made this data more transparent to the end users. And that has led to the identification of a lot of different insights and gaps within our technology processes, where, you know, gaps with our systems, gaps with business processes, and we've kind of come up with ways to remediate those. So the attention now is less on, you know, procuring the data, but more about taking action based on what the data is telling us. Again, uh, the next slide actually speaks to the last point, which is we've replaced our enterprise financial reporting tool, the, the tool that I mentioned earlier, the, uh, you know, .NET-based um, data cube solution. We've actually replaced that completely. We've taken it in-house. We've taken over the development of the ETL as well as um, all of the reporting capabilities. And we've created a lot many views and integrated new data sources within the financial reporting tool at this point. So we'll actually come back to the, uh, the cost reductions, but I just wanted to quickly go over the, um, you know, the, the previous state. So, so this is something I kind of already mentioned. So in the past, what was happening was on a nightly basis, we were sending the policy and loss data over to this third party vendor who basically gave us back our own data in the form of a SQL Server database. And, and separately, they had a process which create, put our data in a data cube, which then made available you know, data to us for, you know, to, to our leadership team for you know, the, the overnight performance of, um, you know, across different lines. The accuracy data of the data was, obviously, it was high because it was going directly from the source systems. But it was extremely difficult, almost impossible, to integrate new data sources without a significant amount of time and effort being invested into it. And, 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 and to a certain extent, it was a lot of, um, it was a lot of unnecessary kind of steps that we needed to take to get to the point where it needed to be. So after the implementation of Tableau, we now actually have a Tableau extract that goes directly against our, um, you know, our data warehouse and you know, our submission system as well, and just extracts the data on a nightly basis. Uh, so again, the same feeds that, so as I said, we took over the, uh, the processing of our, uh, the ETL processing as well. So we actually get, receive the feeds from our third party vendors. So, so our third party is actually, the reason I say third party is because our policy system, the booking system is still managed by a third party. So they send us overnight, they send us all of our data, all of the bookings that happened the prior day. And we basically consolidate all of the data into our data mart. And then we've put Tableau on top of the data mart and our submission system to give us all of the insights that we need, that management needs on a daily basis. Um, previously, it was difficult to actually meet the 9 a.m. deadline, the prior tool. Um, today, we actually, for the last, I think since the beginning of this year, actually, we've been delivering all of the reports on time at 6 a.m. every morning without any delays. And it, it's, it's extremely accurate because we, have, we are directly accessing the source systems to get the data. And the ability to integrate new sources because of the virtualization capability is extremely, uh, you know, it's, it's extremely agile. We can do it very quickly, and we've done that on numerous occasions. 
So it, again, for, from a management perspective, I think this, this was one of the key things because they were getting all these different reports from different teams and the numbers sometimes didn't kind of match up. So now there's no question about that. There's just one central source where everyone goes to for their financial information. And if, if there were a, if there is any, ever a situation where the data didn't make it, it, it's just a question of why did the data not flow through in the right manner? And it has to flow through eventually into our financial reporting system for it to be considered you know, accurate. Um, again, and, and all of this is done with you know, underlying everything. There is a lot of complexity, but all of that is, is obfuscated from a, you know, a data consumer perspective. They don't have to worry about any of that. It's all transparent to them. It, it's all kind of it's all hidden to them, and, and we kind of handle it from an IT perspective. But um, and in, in addition to what they were able to do, they are now able to access, you know, this able to slice and dice data in a lot of different ways. We've added new dimensions that they didn't previously have available to them. And they can now, depending on the audience, so you know, typically leadership teams, they're, they're usually the C-level is more concerned about the overall high-level performance. And that's most of our views start off at the high level. And then each one of the views has the ability to drill down into details. So as a program manager or as someone who's working on the loss side, you probably want to get down to the lowest level of detail in the data. And all of our dashboards typically follow the same pattern where we start off at a very high level and we enable, we give them the flexibility to drill down into the details. So, you know, going back to the previous slide, just to touch upon, you know, what this has done is it's actually reduced our cost um, of, of maintaining the financial reporting solution by almost 50%. It's improved the speed of data delivery by 43%. It's guaranteed delivery. And, and it's an email, email subscription that goes out at 6 every morning once the results are ready for the prior day. And it has reduced uh, error rates, uh, you know, due to the gaps in system interfaces by 40%. I'll speak a little bit more about the error rates and the gaps in the system interfaces a little bit uh, as, as part of the third implementation that um, I have in the example. So the second one is the implementation of a hit ratio dashboard. Again, for folks who are from the insurance industry, they may be familiar with the hit ratio dashboards. In insurance, you have like, you have um, your customers, they come, they submit their kind of, you know, request for getting a quote. After that, somebody on the, in the underwriting side reviews it and they provide a quote. So that's the quoted stage, and then you have, uh, you know, the, they can either choose to accept the, uh, you know, the, the premium or, or the actual, um, you know, policy, and it's bound, and then it eventually gets issued. But so obviously, you get a lot of submissions. Um, you know, you quote, you try to quote all of them, obviously, and then depending on whether or not the customer wants to do business, they would accept the quote, and it would go into the buying stage. So there are a lot of ratios that are very important to all of the underwriters and to the leadership team, and those are like you know the quote to submitted ratios, and there are the quote to um, you know the bound to submitted ratios. So just just as a measure of you know of the different uh, you know submissions that come to us, how many how much actually translates into business. So the customer experience team was actually doing, um, you know, they were creating this report. So on a monthly basis, what they used to do was they go, used to go into our policy system and our loss system, uh, and they used to extract, you know, get Excel extracts of all the data. Now, when we were a relatively smaller firm, it was not a whole lot of data, so it was probably working out a little better, but very soon we started kind of outgrowing Excel in general. And it, it used to take them at least 20 hours a month to develop this report, just getting data from the different sources, it took them at least 20 hours. A lot of times Excel would crash, so they would have to restart everything from scratch. And, and we actually, when we started looking into automating it, one of the things that we noticed was that you know, they had a whole bunch of different tabs. And when we went into some of the sheets and we looked at the formulas, the formulas weren't even consistent across, across rows. Because at some point, somebody probably modified a formula, didn't copy it over to all the cells. And there was just a, a whole bunch. It was a complete mess. So, they came to us and they were kind of, they wanted to, at the time they actually came to us, they weren't even doing it monthly because uh, they just didn't have the bandwidth to, they were actually doing it quarterly at the time. So again, but this is very critical data because it helps you understand operationally how well the firm is doing. So it was really important to them. So again, we, we looked at what they were trying to do, the end goal, and, and we looked at the different data sources. And again, right now, uh, it took us 16 hours of actual effort to build a Tableau dashboard that got data from the policy system, the same data from the policy system and the submission system. Overnight, we run an extract, which probably takes less than five minutes to execute. And they have access to all of the, hit, you know, all of the uh, different ratios that 
they wanted to get and more. And we've started bringing in more dimensions so that now if they wanted to analyze the hit ratios by underwriter or if they wanted to analyze the hit ratio by program or niche, they could do all of those different things. And more importantly, we also tried to present a more graphical visualization for them so that instead of you know, going through a series of numbers on, on, on an Excel spreadsheet and trying to figure out whether or not there is a trend, whether things are improving or not, they can just look at a visual representation of the data and make a determination of you know, how well they're doing operationally. So again, uh, a process that was probably done quarterly at one point, 20 hours a month, we've just taken it, it took us a good you know, 16 hours of actual effort to develop it, one-time effort, and they have all of the data at their fingertips at this point. So again, many more dimensions, tremendous cost and time savings, and most importantly, as a customer service team or as, as a team who's responsible for the operations of the organization, it, it is, it is much more valuable that their time be spent actually analyzing the data and taking actions based on the data as opposed to trying and just gathering data from different sources and creating these reports. So that, that's what we've enabled. We've enabled them to actually be able to get these insights you know, at their fingertips so that they can now start taking action based on the insights. Uh, and again, it, it's live, it's, it's almost live. I, I say live, but it's an overnight feed. We can make it a live connection as well, but it's live access to reliable data because now there is no data manipulation. There is no question of um, you know, formulas not having been updated. So it, it's, it's all accurate data. So the accuracy is very high and it's, it's access to uh, you know, live data. A lot of times it's very surprising when we actually implemented this, there were a lot of questions uh, that came to us because the data that they saw didn't align with the data that they were used to seeing. So they were like, these numbers look off, this is wrong. And we had to go back and we, in every instance, we went back and we justified that this is actually the more accurate version of the truth. What you were looking at prior was probably because of some you know, error on your spreadsheet or something, but this is the most accurate version of the truth. So the third, a third implementation is um, you know, system reconciliations and failed transactions. So I'll give you a little bit of a background on how some of our systems work. So we have the policy administration systems and the billing systems and all of these transactional systems. You know, these are our source systems. And uh, we have, at, at the bottom, we have uh, our booking system where all of this data eventually flows into from a policy perspective or a loss perspective. And, um, we have a middle tier that sits where, which is supposed to translate all this information uh, that comes from the upstream system and sends it to the downstream system. Now, typically, um, there are some transformations that happen in that middle tier, but it, it shouldn't impact any of the key measures. It shouldn't impact things like premiums that are flowing through. But in certain instances, it was found that there were certain changes that were going on which we weren't able to detect. So it was important for us to understand from an audit perspective, you know, and obviously from a business perspective as well, why there were differences. So, but, but it was difficult for us to, in an efficient manner, figure out you know, what the source system has a, you know, had as the premium, as an example in the case of policies, and what the target system was telling us. There was no way for us to reconcile data between the two systems. And sometimes what happens is that the, the, again, as I said, the booking system is managed by a third party and they have certain restrictions on what information can be sent. So, you know, uh, it was, so we've actually, as we've grown as a company, we've, uh, we've adopted a new policy administration system. So the, the existing uh, booking system worked very well with the prior version of the policy administration system, but with the newer version, we had access to a lot more data sources and we had access to a lot of additional data points which, which were required by a lot of different teams, but they were just not making their way into the downstream systems. More, more importantly, if there were certain issues with data that was sent downstream, it would get rejected, what we call a reject or a failed transaction. And then there would be very, there was very little visibility into what that failed transaction really meant. And it would never hit the financial. So from, uh, you know, as a program manager, you'd be like, okay, I expected to book this much premium, but only this much has made it into the financial reporting system. So there was, a, there was, it, it was very, uh, not a very transparent process. And what we've enabled through Tableau is making that process more transparent bringing more visibility into the types of um, you know, failed transactions that we have, making sure that we actually take data from our source systems and reconcile it back to data in the target systems, and making sure that everything is actually aligned. So w an important kind of byproduct of this whole exercise was that it, it's, whenever there is a failed transaction, as an example, the typical response from the end users was always that, you know, oh, it's an IT issue. 
and IT gets blamed for everything. And, and sometimes it's a fair point. IT can get blamed for some of the issues which are related to the systems. But what we realized after we, we kind of dug in deeper into some of these things and we made the data more visible and more available to everyone for analysis, it turned out that it was actually not just IT. It was actually a lot of the business processes that were established were not being followed properly. So it was things like, you know, you need to have certain fields populated before you can make a, you know, before you can actually submit a transaction downstream. And they were just not filling out the forms properly or they were just not doing their due diligence. So it was, it, again, it, it's not about, it wasn't about, you know, finger pointing or blaming anyone for it, but the fact that there were these issues and we were never aware of, completely aware of what the scope of magnitude of these issues was. As an example, for one of our systems, for the failed transactions, we realized that 75% of the failed transactions were as a result of user input errors as opposed to system errors. So that was an important kind of thing because, you know, it, it's always possible. I mean, you can always, uh, you know, do a data patch and make things right in downstream systems, but then you are now, now you're misaligned with the upstream system. So that's never a good practice, and we never wanted to do that. And as IT, that's really all we can do if the business is not willing to do what they're supposed to. But now, at least now, since we have the data to back us up, we can actually go back to the end users and be like, well, this is the reason for it. If you do it right, then the data will flow through right. So that, that, that's, so that, that was a very good uh, kind of discussion. And, and to, to the you know, credit of all of our end users, they were really very receptive to this information. And, and we've already started improving a lot of our business processes because of this, or at least um, you know, in some cases, ensuring that we follow the right processes to make the data flow through in our systems. So again, so we, we've enabled, like, we have a system, we have, like, at least, like, you know, five or six different core systems, and we have, on the downstream, we have two or three different systems which are for reporting or, or for financial reporting or, or otherwise operational reporting. And we've enabled all of the system-to-system uh, -system reconciliations between each one of these interfaces, and we've enabled the automation of all of those reconciliations utilizing Tableau. So in, in fact, one of the, you know, going back to the data virtualization concept, one of the uh, reconciliations that I've built, which is like a centralized, uh, you know, source for all reconciliations, it actually goes against, I think, eight different SQL Server databases, gets data on the fly, and, and just builds out the reconciliations and points out issues if there are any issues between the upstream and downstream systems. So again, th the same thing, the same concept over here as well. It's one central location where everyone can go to to understand what the issues are with the data. If there are, you know, because all of these, if you have failed transactions, then those failed transactions have an impact on the reported financials, whether it's premium, whether it's lost data. And everyone needs to be aware of what, what the impact is, uh, you know, to the financials. Um, and it, it provides them the ability to understand the premium and lost data that's not made it downstream yet. And it enables them to drill down into the details of each one of these individual failed transactions and rejects so that they can know what corrective action needs to be taken. And, and we can assign it based on, we can create views based on you know, who's responsible for it. So we can split all of the different uh, issues that we have and we assign ownership to each one of the groups and then the individual groups take action on that. So again, as a concept, I mean, you know, Tableau has, uh, within any organization, and I'm, I'm sure we can all relate to that, within any organization, there is a lot of data that is sitting out there in different data sources and different databases. And it, it's all, it's, it's golden, the data is golden, it's just sitting out there waiting to be discovered. Right? You need the right tools, you need the right technologies, and you need, the right, you need the right mindset to actually, you know, make sense of the data, to give people access to the data, to make sense of the data, and do what's right with the data. So Tableau has actually given our data a voice. It has actually enabled, you know, users across, you know, all levels of the organization, the ability to have meaningful conversations with the data. I mean, they can actually now, have that kind of a conversation with the data, get insights from the data, and take actions as appropriate based on the data. They don't have to worry about, you know, what am I going, to, where am I going to get my data from? Is my data going to be reliable? They don't have to worry about any of that. They can actually focus on things that really matter to them. And, it, and, and Tableau makes it, enables it in a very efficient manner. Uh, if we look at the, you know, the evolution in numbers, um, we can. We started off in 2015, as I said. We started off with uh, two desktop licenses and uh, 10 server licenses. 
and uh, we started building out a couple of reports. The very first implementation was actually we have a we have a relationship with a third party vendor, which provides uh, we install like these cameras and stuff into the cars and the vehicles, you know, trucks, buses, charter buses, whatever. And uh, we get back telematic data for all of these different drivers, you know, so we can monitor driver behavior, we can monitor you know accident scenes and stuff like that. Um, the first. Tableau was originally when we built out the first dashboards, it was actually hooking into that data source, which was a data cube, and enabling reporting you know, on that. Since that time, we've come a long way. If you look at the um, you know, evolution in terms of the number of licenses we've had, we've actually moved from you know, 10 server licenses to 25, server 75, and finally, um, at the end of last year, we got the server license, and we have over 400 users right now on our reporting platform. Um, Again, in terms of the number of workbooks as well, you can see the growth. You can see the growth quite clearly. But what's interesting to see is that in terms of the number of core developers, and when I say developers, I mean I, there are multiple people who actually develop, but it's not the full-time responsibility of most of it, the people who are developing to do that. So if you really look at uh, the development time that is spent you know, building all of these things, it's probably not more than two full-time developers doing all of the work. So. Uh, now we've actually, this year, we've just, we've procured a lot many licenses. Now we, we actually, at this point, we have 20 desktop licenses. And we have users across, um, you know, HR, finance. It, it's, it's amazing how we've actually received requests from all these different groups, which um, we, we, were, we were kind of surprised. I mean, the actuaries, we kind of expected to work with them quite a lot. But we've actually received requests from HR and finance. And, and finance was, um, is typically, I mean, they, they, they've always loved working with Excel. But now they've actually adapted to Tableau very well, and they love it, and they, they want to use more and more of it, and they've actually requested more access to it via the uh, desktop. So some of the things that actually worked for us, um, you know, the way we actually implemented it, uh, the first thing is you know, Tableau sites. So if you guys have the server implementation, you know that you can create multiple sites within Tableau. So one of the things that we've done is we've broken out our uh, reporting platform into two different sites. One is the financial reporting uh, portion component of it, which is very heavily used by the senior leadership team. And that's where they go. That is their central stop for you know, getting all of the information associated with you know, how they're doing as a business. Uh, and then there is a separate site, which is the, uh, all of the operational insights. So any, anything that has to do with you know, the day-to-day -day operations, uh, people need loss runs to figure out if they should be renewing, renewing an account. They want to see data on um, you know, the losses associated with the policy. A program manager might want to see how is it individually doing with the program and what state is uh, you know, performing well versus what state is not performing well. All of those are more of the operational insights that we make available through the operational insights portal. We have started publishing, again, all of our data sources into one central data source repository within each one of these sites so that um, whenever we develop something, we are always trying to look for, is there a published data source that we can actually leverage instead of building out a new data source? We try and kind of put in the right uh, you know, descriptions and stuff so even somebody new who wants to create something can get access to, everyone has access to these published data sources and they can start creating their reports based on these published data sources. One of the things that we've also kind of done is, uh, you know, we've used captions a lot. I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with captions, but on the desktop, you can actually, uh, you know, you have the option to, uh, when you're building a workbook, you can see captions. And what we use that for is sometimes people come to us with requests which are very specific in nature. They are like, you know, we need these filters. We only want to look at this population of the data, and we just want to look at, so there are very uh, specific requirements that they come up with. and. When we're building it, everyone's kind of familiar with what they're asking for, and it's easy enough to put together. But you know, a week or a month from now, when you look at that data, you look at it and go like, what is this? I mean, who, who created this? What was the value of this? What was the intent behind this? So captions actually allows us to document everything that we're having as, you know, if there are any assumptions going into building the dashboards or if there are any uh, specific filter criteria that, you know, things which are, maybe it's a, a source level filter, it's not actually a filter that you make available on the dashboard itself. Those are the kinds of things that we actually, you know, document within the caption section. So anyone who's looking at the data at any given point in time would know, you know, what the, what the scope of that report is or what the scope of that dashboard is. So I think that's worked out really well as, as well. So, and then, uh, I'm a little rusty on my second law of thermodynamics, but, but I guess the overall principle is, you know, any, any given um, system starts off in a very ordered fashion, 
and then the normal tendency for the system is to move to a very disorderly, you know, disordered uh, structure. So, and that's true for Tableau as well. Uh, and, and then you need to do some, I guess, work to bring it back from that disordered state back into the orderly state. But that, that's the exact same with uh, you know, Tableau as well. We, because of the ease of Tableau and because of the ease of creating these reports, uh, it's, it's very, I've seen this happen a lot of times, and people just get super excited about it and just cr start creating random worksheets, and you know, they just start saving their own worksheets in their own folders. And, and it just is a complete, um, a lot of these things like, you know, are completely redundant, and, and they don't make any sense. And even the users, they don't, they build it, they never even look at it again. So it's very easy for this entire kind of ecosystem to go completely out of balance and out of control. So it's very important to establish the right, um, you know, the right mindset, the right discipline within, you know, how these things are managed and maintained. It's not as much of a concern for us on the financial reporting side of things because, uh, it, Anything that's published over there is very closely monitored and governed by what the the core, you know, the C-level executives have requested. But on the operational insight side, it is extremely easy for things to get completely out of control. So, again, we've not done a great job at it yet because a lot of it is like, you know, we need to do this urgently and we keep doing stuff. But uh, we've started kind of working towards, um, you know, reviewing periodically all of the things that are posted over there, making sure that you know, things that have been posted are actually being accessed by people. If things are not being accessed within, say, the last three months, we need to start having conversations with the users who create it, and like, is this something you really need? Because some of the common things that we've seen is that um, within, within Tableau, if you have a dashboard, people have started saving things as, you know, this is a, a separate, these are all separate workbooks. Workbook for quarter one, workbook for quarter two, workbook for quarter three, and it's like, you can actually just create within the workbook itself, you can create views, and you can save your own views. So a little bit of, is probably on us to educate the users on what the right way to do something is, but a lot of it is also constantly being aware of what is being done on the server and what people are trying to accomplish because it can easily get out of control very quickly, and, and it would, uh, you know, if we let it be that way for too long, it'll be too difficult to kind of rein every, everything back in. So I think making that extra attempt and putting in the right views on who's accessing what and for what reason, I think is really important as well. So talk a little bit about the reasons for you know, the successful implementation of Tableau at ProSight. I, I think one of the key factors is uh, the management support. So I remember back like um, when we were trying to get Tableau into the environment and when we, filled, when we actually built the first set of dashboards, we actually demoed it to our CEO and he was super excited. He, and he's all about technology, and he's, he's great with technology as well. He was super excited about it. And he started kind of playing around with it, and, and the very next day he called me into his office, and, and the dashboard that I had built, he was actually on that dashboard in edit mode, and he was trying to kind of play around dragging and dropping stuff. And I was, I was actually amazed. I mean, for someone at that level to have, you know, to spend that kind of time, it shows the passion for the data, you know, that he has. So, and again, and then he was like, after the conversation, he was like, but did you know we can actually send out emails using Tableau? And I'm like, yes, those are subscriptions. We'll actually enable that as well eventually. So, again, it's, it's the, and the entire C level actually, they've, they've embraced Tableau because I think they, they believed in the direction that we were taking. They've embraced it and they, and, and for them to actually dictate the direction that, you know, this is the direction, it makes a lot of difference. For us to try and implement Tableau and get users to adopt, to, you know, to adopt to the tool is, is a little more difficult if there was not that support. But when it comes right from the top, it is very easy to actually get everyone onboarded and get everyone on the same page with respect to what the right kind of long-term solution is. So it's it definitely tremendous support from, you know, our, our C, the C-level, the entire suite. I mean, our CIO is extremely excited about it, and every time he sees something being done, uh, you know, the way it should not be done, he's like, you know, maybe we can leverage Tableau and maybe we can do it differently. But again, and, and to the flip side of that, you know, it's always, the concern always is that, you know, we need to keep, we may, need to make sure that there is discipline in the way we do things. And my immediate manager is the principal architect. He's always concerned about it. He's like, did you make sure you're following the right standards? Did you make sure that you're actually, you know, you, you're not doing stuff just because people ask you to? I'm like, I'm trying my best to not do that. But again, so we've actually created, um, you know, based on what he's recommended, we've actually created standard templates with, you know, where the logo goes. Uh, you know, what are the different font sizes and stuff like that. So we are trying to standardize that as well going, you know, going forward. And again, I think the culture at our firm, I think our, our firm is all about, you know, innovation and, and people have really kind of embraced all of the new technologies that we have actually, you know, implemented within 
system. Again, there is always, in, in, in the initial phases, there is always a little bit of reluctance and resistance for people to adapt to anything new. But I think, I think uh, of all the places that I've probably worked, I think this is one of the places where I've seen it being um, you know, adapted to very quickly. And, and, and people have immediately kind of latched onto the value that Tableau provides, and they've asked for more and more stuff to be delivered via Tableau. So that, that's definitely um, you know, put us in the right direction. Um, with respect to Tableau itself, obviously Tableau, as is very kind of evident from this whole conference, it's constantly evolving. Every three months we have some exciting new features coming out, and uh, it, it just kind of, that, that just ensures that we stay successful and we need to, and you know, if we have our opinions, we can post it on the Tableau forums and that actually gets implemented based on, you know, how many people vote for it and stuff. So that's the constant evolution that Tableau has provided is definitely, you know, definitely contributes to the success of Tableau. In terms of what I mean by the reach of Tableau is, is um, because Tableau is such a widely used tool, you know, across various industries, uh, whenever we work with any other third parties where for a new product, like as an example, we recently, uh, you know, migrated to a new ticketing, um, you know, platform, new ticketing solution. And uh, one of the questions that we had for them is like, you know, what is the reporting Platform. So they didn't have their own robust reporting capabilities, but what they said is that, but we know that you guys use Tableau, we are already building a connector for Tableau. So that's what I mean by Tableau reach. Because Tableau is so you know, widely popular, uh, everyone is, is trying to make sure that they have an integration back into Tableau because it's a selling point for their product. So I think that really helps out as well because now we don't have to worry about you know, how do we get access to the data. You know, all of these folks come with their own kind of Tableau connectors that we can actually leverage and build reports off of it. And of course the Tableau user community, it's, it's, uh, I've probably never had a situation where I had a question and the Tableau user community was not able to provide me a response to something that I needed. And, and in the worst case scenario, you can always open up a ticket and, and you know, get your response that way, but I think I've, in most, most cases, like I think nine times out of ten at least, I've never had to go beyond the Tableau user community. So that, that really helps a lot as well. And not just for, for us as developers, but also for people who are starting to use Tableau fresh, like you know, all of these different uh, groups, uh, HR, finance, even for them. Even for them, they don't have to come to us all the time. They can always Google something and just figure it out from the Tableau knowledge base. And the ease of use, I mean, it, it's just needless to say, I mean, it, it's just so easy to use sometimes. It's it's, it's just, as I said, sometimes the pitfall of that, it's so easy to use that people just love creating new stuff all the time and then probably don't go back and look at it. So, so those are the key reasons why, why I believe you know, we've been successful implementing Tableau at ProSide. What's next for us? Uh, we are actually working with the actuaries. As I said, we are increasingly working with them, giving them access to more data. But more importantly, we, they have certain subrogation models and certain other models that they want to automate. So we are trying to integrate uh, Tableau with uh, R for the actuaries and, and you know, R and Python. And uh, in fact, some of the subrogation models that they have, we are also trying to, in the recently released 2019.1, uh, we have the capability to write back um, into the database. So that's something that we're exploring as well because uh, some of these subrogation models, the way they've implemented is they want the claims rep to actually provide feedback on how the subrogation model is working to make sure that the, it's like a self-learning model. So based on that, um, you know, we are trying to see if we can actually, within Tableau, where we provide the visualization, if we can provide a write-back capability, then that write-back capability goes back into the database and can be presented back to the end users and, and the model can kind of be self-sufficient. We are evaluating embedded reports. As I said, we have our own uh, you know, ProSight Direct platform and we also have a portal where our MGAs and uh, you know, our customers and our clients, all of them can go for reporting. But that reporting module is currently not integrated with Tableau. We have a lot of internal reports which we believe can be leveraged into this external platform. So we're looking into you know, evaluating embedded reports for analytics and reporting. And then eventually, finally, you know, enabling data governance via Tableau. You know, Tableau has its own data governance module as well. Like they're still in the process of building out, but there's a lot that we can do. As an example, some of the things we do from a governance perspective is we, we try to, like, when possible, we try to publish the data definitions you know, or formulas. If we're using some calculated fields, we try to publish those calculated fields as part of the dashboard so that people can know, can be on the same page with what, you know, reference to what the data means. So, so that's what's next for us. I think uh, it's been a tremendous journey. Uh, I, I, I 
by no means, um, you know, are we where we need to be, but we're definitely on the right path. And I think uh, with, with Tableau and the evolution of Tableau, you know, I'm hoping that this, this is gonna continue, we'll keep evolving. Uh, so at this point, uh, you know, thank you for your presence uh, over here. Thank you for attending this session. Uh, if you don't mind, if you could complete the survey, I'd really appreciate your feedback on, on, you know, related to the session. And at this point, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take uh, any questions. Thank you. Yes, sir. Jeff. Thank you. One of the obstacles we have internally is overcoming uh, data, well, I'll say walls, okay. where there, we have data owners who don't necessarily want to provide access to these data sources that would be beneficial to us in the catalog. How did you overcome some of those uh, barriers that you had at all? So, so, so when you say they don't want to provide access, is it for security reasons, or what is the purpose behind not well, enabling access? A lot access? of it is um, member information. Okay. It's regulated by banks, let's say. Okay. So we have that side of it. But it, it could be anonymized, and you could you know, talk through a way. It could be made available to everyone. I'm just curious if you had any situations like that and if you were able to overcome those. So I think, again, I think most of the data that we work with is, is data that we own. So we've not really had that kind of a situation. That said, we do work with certain third parties. Uh, you know, some of our products are like, you know, third party providers. So it's kind of difficult to get access to the data because they, the claim is that, you know, it, it's, uh, they support multiple clients and, and their databases have, you know, client data for multiple records. So what we've asked them to do is just kind of, uh, you know, separate out our data and provide it to us as a separate data source. So what they've done is they've just taken our cut of the data and provide it to us in a separate data source which is within our environment as well. So that we don't have to kind of go into their environment. It's actually, it's in a DMZ that sits between their environment and ours and they make data available to us that way. So I don't know if that helps, but Oh, okay, it's internal data, okay. Okay. Just something we'll have to work through. And then sometimes it's just about, and I, I don't know if this makes sense, but sometimes it's about you know telling them what you intend doing with the data, because if that's something that's valuable to them as well, you can turn it around and be like, let's use it as a shared data source that we'll all get value out of. So, yep, yep, spoke. Anyone else? All right, thanks everyone.